Eastman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelson, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together, and they know that good times are twice the fun in pictures. And now, Ozzie Nelson explains the quickest way to a pretty girl's heart. Now, now uh, don't get me wrong, fellas. I'm not trying to suggest that I know a lot about girls. Oh, come on now, Pop. Don't be so modest. Yeah, we've seen your scrapbook. Oh, okay. But, but I do know this much. When you're out with a beautiful girl, take her picture. You don't have to say anything. Just aim and snap. She'll get the idea. Taking somebody's picture is a really modern way to pay a compliment. And here's a really modern way to take your picture. This new Brownie Starmatic camera has an electric eye light meter that sets the lens automatically. You'll get beautiful pictures you once might have missed, perfectly exposed in sun or shade. It's the newest way there is to make good times twice the fun in pictures. Kodak's Brownie Starmatic camera costs only $34.50 or as little as $3.50 down. See all the Brownie Star cameras at your Kodak dealer. Prices start at only $5.95. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Okay, I give up. Where is it? Well, Sally said it was up here someplace. Well, what's so important about this model house anyway? You're not thinking of moving, are you? No, I just promised Sally I'd take a look at it and tell her what I thought of it. Well, uh, the Darby's going to move up here? No, it's Sally's cousin, or a friend of her cousin's, I think it is. Anyway, what are you complaining about? It's a nice day for a ride in the country. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just the curious type. When I go someplace, I kind of like to know where I'm going and why. You say you think it's up here someplace? Wait a second. That sounds like either a tractor or a bulldozer. I'll bet it's right up over the hill there. So maybe we should have turned left back there where we turned right. Could we take that little dirt road up there? Oh, are you kidding? Uh, I don't want to drive the car up there. Well, come on then. Let's walk. The exercise will be good for it. Why didn't Sally come up here herself? She's already been up here. Well, then why did we have to come? Well, she was afraid her cousin might not want to take her word for it. She wanted another opinion on it. Come on. <laughs> Pretty crazy, you know that. <laughs> well, these aren't bulldozers. Well, why would anybody want to build a house here with all those motorcycles? Well, obviously, we've come to the wrong place. What are they trying to do, anyway? Well, they're trying to climb up the hill on their motorcycles. That well, seems pretty silly. Well, no, it's kind of a sport. Boy, it sure looks dangerous. Hi, Mark. Pop. What a what day. Are well, what are you doing here? I'm just having some fun. What are you doing here? Well, uh, we came out to look at a real estate development. I guess we took the wrong turn back there. Yeah, you should have turned the other way. This is Motorcycle Hill. Well, if it isn't, it ought to be. <laughs> Where'd you get the motorcycle? Now, I borrowed it from Bob. Well, do you come out here very often? No, just every... I've been out a few times. You never told us anything about it. Well, you never asked me, and I guess I just forgot to mention it. Well, it's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Well, not especially. At least not if you don't do anything foolish. Well, you mean like getting on the motorcycle? No, I mean like falling off. <laughs> See you later. Okay. Be careful now. Okay. Take it easy. Good job. probably make it the next time. Oh, he's not going to try it again, is he? Well, sure, that's why he came out here. I'm not 
not sure I like this. Why do you let him do a thing like this? Harriet, he's a big boy now. He's entitled to do what he wants. Well, at least you could have tried to talk him out of it. Well, I didn't know about it any more than you did. Besides, he doesn't have to discuss everything he does with me. In fact, he doesn't have to discuss anything. Why doesn't he? Well, because he's old enough to make his own decisions. Well, I know, but he usually talks things over with you first. Well, actually, what is there to talk over? Well, that's for one thing. I can't talk anything over with him unless he talks to me about it first. Why doesn't he? Because he's old enough to make his own decisions. You keep saying that and he keeps going up the hill and falling off. He isn't actually falling off. He just... Uh... <laughs> I can look at the houses, huh? What for? Well, for Sally's cousin. Oh, let her look at him herself. After all, she's old enough to make her own decision. <laughs> Any sign of David yet? No. Why, is he late? Well, not exactly. I just thought he'd be home for dinner by now. Oh, is dinner ready? No, not exactly. <laughs> what seems to be bothering you exactly? Well, nothing exactly, but he's usually home by now. What's that? This time, I'm sure it's not a bulldog. Okay. Hi, Pop. Uh, whose motorcycle is that? It's Bob. Don't you remember I told you? Well, where's your car? Oh, he's got it, and I've got his motorcycle. It's a nice bike, isn't it? Oh, well, well yeah. Uh, of course, uh, I don't know anything about motorcycles. I was thinking about buying if I could make a good deal with them. Oh, well, what about your car? Wouldn't that be uh, pretty expensive to have a motorcycle and a car? Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. If I buy the motorcycle, I ought to sell the car. <laughs> I, I think that'd be a mistake, Dave. I don't think you ought to sell your car. Well, isn't that what you just said? Well, uh, no, I, w what I meant was uh, you ought to think it over uh, pretty carefully uh, before you invest money in a motorcycle. Yeah, it's a tough decision to make. I guess I'll go wash up for dinner. Did Dave say what happened to his car? Oh, yeah, he loaned it to Bob, and Bob loaned him this motorcycle. It's the one he was riding up the hill on. Oh, that's good. For a moment, I was afraid he might have bought this. Nobody's thinking of it. You mean seriously? Well, uh, apparently so. Oh, why didn't you talk him out of it? Well, I, there's just so much I can do. Uh, I, I keep telling you, he's old enough to make his own decisions. Well, so am I, and I'm going to talk to him about it. Well, I think that would be a mistake. If he gets the idea we're trying to gang up on him, he'll be tempted to buy it just to show his independence. Well, I don't mind you showing his independence. I just don't want him to buy a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, I dare you to press that little button there. Oh, what a cute horn. <laughs> hi, Darb. Well, hi, Oz. Come on in. Thanks. Is Sally around? Oh, no. She's over visiting her mother. Oh, well, it's just as well. I want to have kind of a private little talk with you. <laughs> That's very flattering, Oz, but I'm kind of broke myself. Have you tried Joe Randolph? <laughs> I, I uh, don't want to borrow any money. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Well, in that case, how about lending me some? I was kidding when she me five from last summer. Oh, yeah? When was all this? Well, you remember when we went fishing up at Willow Lake? We agreed on a $5 bonus for the guy that caught the first fish. Oz, you did not win that bet. Well, I caught the first fish, didn't I? Yeah, but it was so little, you had to throw it back. Well, nevertheless, it was a fish, and I caught it. All right. I'll settle with you for 50 cents. I'll take it. Okay, I owe you 50 cents. Now, what's your problem? You mean besides having a neighbor who's too cheap to pay his debts? I resent that. Here, have a cigar. Nobody's going to call me cheap. Well, thank you. Here, what's the idea of taking one of those? You don't smoke. Well, I, I don't want to embarrass you, because I, I can give it to David. You mean David smokes cigars? <laughs> well, yeah, he's a, a big boy now. In fact, that's what I came over to talk to you about. He, he's thinking of buying a motorcycle. <laughs> 
Hey, that sounds like fun. I used to have a motorcycle years ago. Oh, yeah, but the things were different in those days. Uh, besides, he doesn't want to just to uh, ride around the streets, and uh, he goes in for this hill climbing stuff. Well, that's pretty dangerous, isn't it? Well, I think so. Not only that, he wants to trade in his car. I think it's a bad deal all around. Can't you talk him out of it? Well, you know, he's not exactly a kid anymore. I don't want to sound like an overbearing parent. When, when a boy gets to be Dave's age, you don't get many chances to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you take him up fishing? You know, just the two of you. There's something about sitting out there in the middle of the lake that's so restful and quiet. It kind of makes it easier to talk things over. You know, I think you got something there. Gee, Dave and I haven't been fishing together in years. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks, Darb. I appreciate it. Do you really? Well, yes, of course. Okay, then how about giving me back my scar? <laughs> Why? Hi. I'm glad you're still awake. I had a little talk with Darby, and I think we figured something out. You mean about Dave and the motorcycle? Yeah, we thought it might be a good idea if we went fishing tomorrow. Just Dave and I. It's nice and quiet up there on the lake, and I could kind of work the conversation around to motorcycles, and we could talk the whole thing out. Well, it sounds like a good idea, but I haven't heard the boys talk about fishing for years. Suppose he doesn't want to go. Well, that's a possibility. Now, of course, if you're offering to take him out on a double date with a couple of good-looking blondes... Hey. Never mind, hey. <laughs> good night. Oh, uh, Rick, uh, your mother and I were just talking about something. Uh, you guys still like to go fishing, don't you? Oh, sure. Well, what about Dave? Uh, how does he feel about it? I don't know. Uh, do you think he'd like to go tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. Why don't you ask him? Well, yeah, I, I guess I will. Well, good night. Good night, dear. Uh, good night, Rick. Uh, I think Dave will want to go. Uh, do you think Rick will mind if I don't ask him to go along? Oh, I don't imagine so. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Well, hi, Dave. Oh, hi, Pa. Where's Rick? I guess he went downstairs to get something to eat. Oh. Well, anyway, I, I, I just had an idea. Uh, I thought I'd go fishing tomorrow. Ah, that sounds good. Yeah, I thought I'd go up to Willow Lake, you know, where we always used to go. Yeah, and it's real nice up there. Say, uh, here's an idea. Uh, how'd you like... I thought I'd round up the fishing stuff tonight so I can sleep till the last minute. Oh, you going fishing too? Yeah, Pop just asked me. <laughs> Hey, why don't you come along with us? Well, yeah, it sounds great. Be just like old times, huh, Pop? Just the three of us? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, you better get to bed. We have to get an early start in the morning. Oh, well, uh, good night, fellas. Good night, Pop. Uh, uh Rick. Uh, uh, this is kind of embarrassing, son, but I got myself into sort of a trap. See, when I mentioned fishing, I didn't mean for all three of us to go up there. Oh, Gee, I'm sorry, Pop. No, that's okay. It wasn't your fault. See, I was going to have a little man-to-man -man talk, and that's kind of difficult with the three of us along. I understand. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Oh, oh no, that's all right. Well, we can all go up some other time, okay, son? Well, sure. Don't worry about it, Pop. Right. Good night, Rick. Good night. I sure hope you can convince Dave. The more I think about that motorcycle, the less I like it. I'll do the best I can. Rick didn't seem too upset when you told him he couldn't go, did he? No, he seemed to understand. Oh, that's good. Oh, good morning, Nick. Good morning, Mom. Uh, come on, Pop. We better get going. <laughs> uh, Rick, uh, uh, where's David? Oh, he's still asleep. But don't worry. I explained the whole thing to him last night, and he understands. He kind of wanted to go out and try the motorcycle today anyway. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, sit down and have some breakfast, son. Uh, Pop, can't you just come out with it right here? Uh, come out with what? Well, this man-to-man -man talk you wanted to have with me. I've been lying awake all night trying to figure out what I've done. Uh, well, uh, uh Rick... I'll go wake up David. What? <laughs> well, uh, see, uh, there's been a little misunderstanding here. Uh, uh, how would you like to switch places? Uh, suppose you try out the, the motorcycle and, and David goes fishing with me. Why, this is getting real confusing. Yeah, it, it, uh, it sure is. <laughs> uh, here, uh, why don't you have some coffee? Just kind of quiet your nerves.
This is Susie, eight years old this week. This is Susie's dad. His camera is eight years old this week, too. Susie sure has changed a lot in eight years, and so have cameras. Suppose Dad had a brand new Brownie Starmatic camera. He'd get the right exposure time after time automatically. This amazing camera measures the light with its electric eye light meter and automatically adjusts the lens. When you shoot in the shade, the lens opens to admit the correct amount of light. And in the sun, the lens closes down. You get the right exposure at all times automatically. Beautiful pictures in deep shade like this. Or in bright sun like this. All automatically. So why not take your pictures the modern way? The Brownie Starmatic costs only $34.50 or as little as $3.50 down. Other Brownie cameras start at $5.95. They're as new as tomorrow and mighty good reasons to insist on the name Kodak. Everything all set? Yeah, I think so. You sure you want to drive all the way up to the lake just to have a talk with me? Well, yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun, Dave. Well, uh, can't we have a talk right here? Well, uh, it's a little more restful up there. You sure you're not using this as an excuse to go fishing? No, no, I, I really want to have a talk with you. Did you lunch, fellas? Oh, oh thanks. Almost oh, forgot that. Have a good time. Uh, Mom, if Bob phones, will you tell him I went up to the lake fishing and I'll talk to him about buying the motorcycle when I get back? Oh, uh, uh yes, yes, of course, dear. Uh, you better get going. The fish are getting restless. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so thank you. Thank you. Now, if I was a young fellow like you, I'd get me one of them. So, uh, you mean a uh, motorcycle? Yeah, they're great. Well, I suppose so. Well, thank you. Call again. What was you want to talk to me about, Tom? Oh, well, it'll wait, Dave. No hurry. What was it you wanted to talk to me about, Pop? Oh, well, uh, 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 not right now, Dave. We'll uh, disturb the fish. <laughs> I got one. Yeah! Hey, you're doing great, Pop! This sure is a nice catch, Pop. Oh, thanks, Dave. You want to clean them now? Oh, why don't we wait a little later? Okay. It's peaceful out here, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, I'll tell you what I wanted to talk to you about, Dave. Now, I hope you don't think I I'm trying to make your decisions for you. Oh, I know that, Pop. What's on your mind? Well, it's, it's about the, the, the motorcycle. Well, I pretty much made up my mind about that. Well, uh, on second thought, uh, why don't we talk about it a little later on? Oh, that's okay, Pop. What do you want to say? Well, it, 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 it can wait. Let, let's let's enjoy ourselves. Nice out. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hi Miss Nelson. Hi, Joe. Hi, Fred. What are you guys doing up here? Oh, we talked to your mother. She said you were up here. So Joe and I figured we'd take a little ride and see how these bikes handle the rough roads. We're not keeping you guys from fishing, are we? Oh, no, no, we're just uh, 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 talking a little. Hey, uh... this is a new bike, isn't it? Yeah, how do you like it? Gee, it's a beauty. I just got it in. So, you want to ride it? Yeah, is it all right? Sure, go ahead. Oh, thank I'll you. i keep your dad company. Well, oh, this here is a beautiful spot up here. Yeah, it, it's nice. You know, Dave's a lucky guy. What do you mean? Well, I don't want to embarrass you or anything, Mr. Nelson. But well, I mean, having a father like you. You know, the only time my dad ever takes me fishing is when he wants to talk me out of something. <laughs> well, Mrs. Nelson sure packs a good lunch. <laughs> Take it easy. Don't eat too much, say. Eh? You'll spoil your dinner. You know, it is getting kind of late. driving around? You've been gone over an hour. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot all about the time. Sure, it's a beautiful bike. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, come on, Dave. I, I think we'd better get started. 
Well, what about the talk, Bob? Huh? Well, we can talk while we're driving home. We'll meet you guys up on the road. Okay. Okay, Joe. Oh, great. Oh, we'll change it for you, Pop. car here. You and Dave can ride home on my bike, and I'll ride home with Joe. Do you think the car is okay here? Oh, sure, it'll be all right. We can come back and pick it up tomorrow. Guess we don't have much choice. Get out and push. <laughs> Hi. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Hi. Oh, you fellas. Well, I see you took my advice. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to work it into the conversation. Well, I thought that's why you took him fishing. Well, uh, yes, it was, but uh, I couldn't seem to put the right words together at, at well, and then, then Joe and Fred came up there, and uh, one thing led to another. Mom? Yes, dear? When was it to be ready? Oh, about 20 minutes. Oh, good. That'll give me a chance to return Fred's motorcycle. I want to talk to him about it. Well, uh, uh, Dave, uh, before you do anything you'll be sorry for. Uh, I don't think I want to buy one, Pop. Uh, I... <laughs> What did you say? I said I don't think I want to buy one. I've got my car and it'd just be an added expense. Oh, you're absolutely right, Dave. I'm glad you feel that way, Pop. I wasn't sure whether you wanted me to buy one or not. Well, no, no. I, 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 I'm glad you decided not to. <laughs> we should have told me that before. We could have had a lot more fun on the fishing trip. Oh, <laughs> we can go up there again. We can go up next weekend. Okay, swell. Uh, I'll see you later. Oh, okay, Dave. How about that? My little talk with him did have an effect. What talk? <laughs> the talk I was going to have with him. Well, how could it have had an effect on him when you never did talk to him? Well, I, I think he, he kind of sensed that... Gee, you know, I guess this proves Dave doesn't need me to, to help him make his decisions anymore. He seems to figure things out pretty well all by himself. Oh, come on now. You don't have to be that modest. Well, I'm not being modest. Then you're forgetting. Forgetting what? All the talks you've had with him since he's been old enough to understand. That's why he's able to make his own decisions now. You know, I'm not sure I believe that, but it sure sounds good the way you say it. <laughs> hey, Pop. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, hi Eric. Eric. Hey, uh, could I borrow a hundred dollars? A hundred dollars? What for? For a down payment on a motorcycle. Oh, <laughs> right before we even discuss money, let, let's have a little talk about the, this motorcycle business. Okay, Pop. When are we leaving? Leaving? Uh, for where? Oh, for the lake. Are we going to talk this over while we're fishing? Oh, no, no. Let's, let's talk it over right now. Well, why don't you go up to the lake and talk it over? You have to pick up your car there tomorrow anyway, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, we'll go fishing tomorrow morning. Oh, gee, that's swell, Pop. Hey, Oz! Come on, Oz! I got something to show you! Sounds like darn. 
Look, Rick, I hate to project myself into this, but I really don't think you ought to buy a motorcycle. No, neither do I. Well, why did you ask your father for one? I figured it'd be a sure way to get to go fishing. <laughs> and you really don't want a motorcycle? Oh, heck no. My car's running fine. Besides, you can't kiss a girl on a motorcycle. <laughs> Jake has an over. Harriet! Hey, whose motorcycle is that? It belongs to my son. You mean he bought it? Well, yes. I figured if David could talk us into buying him one, why well, let my son talk me into buying him one? <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Well, I don't explain, dear. He may want to sell it to us in a couple of months. <laughs> Harriet, I'm not going to buy Ricky a motorcycle. Who's talking about Ricky? Well, uh, David doesn't want one, and, and I certainly don't. Well, <laughs> well who else is there? Are you kidding? Next week, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet will be brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of fine foods for the whole family. Now a word about one of the many fine Quaker products. Ozzie and Harriet are brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, who also present The Ed Sullivan Show on another network. And remember, the pictures you'll want tomorrow you must take today. Get Kodak film in the familiar yellow box. Good night. David may currently be seen in two outstanding motion pictures, The Big Circus and Day of the Outlaw. Also, be sure to get Ricky's new sensational album, Songs by Ricky. Four human beings somewhere in the world are asking you for help. They don't know you specifically. They couldn't talk with you if they did. But in the international language of human emotions, they're hoping your generosity will respond to their needs. They're among millions who are hungry today and every day. Your generosity expressed with one dollar to the Great Care Food Crusade can send them food for a month. The dollar from you delivers the complete package overseas in your name. Remember that hunger hurts. And join the Food Crusade Care by sending your contributions to the local care office in your city. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.